This thing is big. Bro. Goodness. For most Texas players, walking into the Superdome for the first time was a once in a lifetime experience. For Texas linebacker Malcolm Roach, it was nothing new. Oh yeah, we back at home. We back at home. Growing up 80 miles northwest of New Orleans in Baton Rouge, Louisiana is home. Everything I knew for 18 years of my life and Louisiana is just the best culture in the world to I me. Mean, so many different heritages, all of them coming together as one is so unique to me and I love it. It's a lot of blue collar people around here. A lot of stuff that this state has gone through and just countless times bouncing back, bouncing back, coming back stronger. My earliest memories of my hometown, uh, I had to say Hurricane Katrina. We didn't really get affected by Hurricane Katrina as much, but I just remember going through the storm and playing football with my brothers and my cousins and throwing footballs in the middle of the storm because I had to say football. I think it's just an outlet for my family to just see joy. The love of football runs deep in the Roach family and was passed down to Malcolm at an early age. They called him the steroid baby. When Malcolm was in about the uh, fourth grade, he started dressing out with the varsity team when I was the head coach at Southern Lab. We had practice one day. Chad Jones, the third round draft choice for the New York Giants, all American at LSU. But we were practicing one day and Malcolm steps off the field and hits Chad and knocks him down. I said, man, you better not hit Chad and hurt him, man. <laughs> you know, Chad was one of the best players on our team, but that's one of the most remarkable things. I always remember that, you know, him loving football. Malcolm's mother, Nancy, played quarterback in intramurals during high school. His brother, Michael Ventress Roach, was an all-conference safety at Grambling State, but it was his father, Michael Roach, who had the greatest impact on Malcolm's passion for the sport. Michael was a high school and collegiate football coach in the Louisiana area for 24 years. He also grew up in Baton Rouge in a low-income area called Eden Park, a neighborhood in which the per capita income of its residents is lower than 97% of American neighborhoods. My coaches were very, very much an influence on my life. You know, I came out of a neighborhood where I wasn't supposed to make it. And I felt like if I make it out of this, I'm going to reach back and I'm going to help some kids. He's just a father figure for everybody who plays for him. I remember waking up at 5 o'clock in the morning every day, going to neighborhoods that I was fortunate enough to not be raised in. And he'd go and pick up kids, pick up kids that played for him, and just giving them a way out. And I'm in the front seat in the car, half sleep, but I just had to be a part of it. Just seeing the difference he's made in so many kids' lives, not just my life. In the streets of Baton Rouge, it's easy to get influenced. And he made it a way for so many kids to get out the streets. In high school, Malcolm played for his father at Madison Prep. We were playing school at East St. John. I think we were down 7-21. And my dad was giving a speech. I say, hold on, hold on, coach. I, call him, I don't know if I call him dad or coach. I just say, hold on, let, let me talk. And everybody stood up and was like, did he really just cut him off in the middle of his speech? And I was scared at first. And I basically just had to tell the team what was on my mind. That speech right there, everybody still talks about him. I'm not calling today. You know, my friends, you remember you cut your daddy off in the middle of the speech? And <laughs> everybody was scared. But that speech right there, I'll never forget that speech. And this memory right here really developed me into the lead I am today. This is our house, bro. Yeah. This is our house. Yeah. We going for it all day. We push all the chips in. Last year, Malcolm said he wanted to play in the Sugar Bowl. He told my wife that. You know, she said, uh, Mike, they got a chance. When they said we're going to be, we're going to play in the Sugar Bowl. You know, man, we were jumping for joy. The phone, the, actually, the phone never stopped ringing. Cell phone and house phone. Can you get us some tickets? It's like a, a gift at Christmas time, you know, to be able to enjoy this with him. And the Texas Longhorns beat the fifth ranked Georgia Bulldogs, Texas, the 2019 All State Sugar Bowl champions. We came home and got the dub. And you can't tell us what can't be done. We 
can't tell us what can't be done, where we came from in two years, bro. The Sugar Bowl champs, we didn't even go to the bowl game. My freshman year, it's amazing. And to do it in this building, where well, I just saw so many games be played for my older brother, my dad coaching this building. I'm, I, I can't even explain it, like, it's just amazing. And I'm just soaking in every minute of it. Malcolm's always been a kid that has made his family proud of him. You know, from Pop Warner to school, everything you could ask for in the kid, he's given us that. I guess it just goes to show y'all get a little emotional when I, when I talk about it. Because I think the, uh, the good Lord has really been good to Mal. The sky's the limit for him. Football to my family is just one of the greatest things ever. And I hope it just continue generation through generation and we're able to pass it down.